Hello and welcome to Beyond Market, where we bring you up to speed on development outcomes in Africa. I'm Kenneth Iboma. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. On today's show, we'll look at perceptions of Africans on how their countries are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. And then you can join the conversation and let us know what you think on social media. The hashtag to use is Beyond Market. You can also reach me at Kenneth Ibomo. Now, a new survey is gauging the public opinion of Africans on how COVID-19 crisis is playing out. The survey is a joint work of Deloitte in partnership with research firm Opinion Way and also consulting firm 35 North. Now, the survey was carried out in eight countries in Africa and finds that there's a deep anxiety about the economic and social consequences of the pandemic. And I caught up with Bryce Chassels, he's the managing partner for Francophone Africa at Deloitte. I need to get more insight on the findings. <music> Thank you so much for joining me on the uh, on the show today, I'm Bryce. And let's just start with on the first understanding how the COVID-19 pandemic is playing out and why perceptions in Africa matter, especially at this time. Yeah, I think it was very important for us to uh, listen and understand exactly what uh, what are the perceptions of uh, the African population with a representative sample. You know, the survey was conducted one month ago. Uh, the survey uh, showed a very high level of uh, anxiety, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the, the virus, but but more than the virus itself, uh, about the financial and uh, economic uh, and social consequences of the of the crisis. In particular, some specific concerns about the personal situation of the, the population uh, as regards the, the crisis, uh, you know, the fear of losing the, the, the jobs or any uh, negative consequences on, on their financial situation. Uh, this level is pretty pretty high, but also we uh, we discovered, you know, through uh, the, the the survey that the uh, the level of concern of the population is also as regards uh, uh, an increase uh, in poverty. Uh, more than eight uh, respondents uh, out of ten uh, uh, have this kind of uh, 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 fear uh, about uh, an increase in poverty and also some food uh, shortage. You know. Uh, the fear of uh, not having enough uh, uh, rice, uh, flour, or oil, for example. All right, I understand this is uh, the first of many other uh, that you plan to carry out. And uh, before we do speak on the methodology, I would like to understand, you know, what the general view is on what you're trying to achieve um, and, and what the next likely set of tests would look like. I think what, what we, we wanted to achieve, to, to understand, you know, the, the perception of the population, uh, and, and also, uh, you know, the, the, the particular situation of Africa uh, compared to our uh, continents. And what, what was really interesting with this uh, survey is also to realize that uh, uh, the level of confidence of the populations towards the actions of the government is pretty high compared to what we see in our, in our geographies. Uh, this is mainly due to the to the you know the quality of the responses of the government. Uh, uh, very early, uh, you know, in the pandemic, uh, when they decided, for example, to uh, to deploy some uh, some containment measures, you know, like uh, locking down the frontiers and the borders and such kind of measures, uh, that was quite efficient at the beginning of the pandemic uh, to avoid a. Uh, a development of uh, the number of cases, and uh, we also uh, uh, we also highlighted the, the fact that uh, there is a, a very high level of confidence towards uh, you know uh, the, the medical uh, staff and uh, such kind of uh, organization uh, generally uh, in in Africa. There is a different level of confidence depending on the on the on the regions and the countries. Uh, but uh, also that is due uh, to the type of communications the governments themselves have deployed, you know, to uh, uh, to increase uh, public awareness uh, and the fact that most countries, in most countries, there, there was a, there is a great level of mobilization of, uh, you know, the public sector, but also the private sector, uh, the NGOs, uh, you know, providing some uh, some responses. Uh, but also, um, uh, you know, the magnitude of the uh, of the plans uh, that have been deployed in many countries uh, to support the economy, uh, to provide some uh, some uh, uh, some uh, 
uh, assistance to the population, uh, some financial and social uh, support to the population, but also to uh, to support the economies, uh, different uh, industry sectors, uh, mostly through uh, some very focused uh, measures. Uh, and we, we also noticed, uh, uh, you know, through uh, all the activities we have in the continent that um, there is uh, a high level of innovation uh, that is uh, that is uh, ongoing uh, in in different sectors to provide some some uh, some response to that uh, to that crisis, uh, especially through digital responses um, to for for example to increase uh, social and and financial inclusion of the informal sector. I want to now take a look at your sampling and understand a little better why you picked these particular eight countries and how you think this is a good reflection on uh, the, the temperature of what is happening on the pulse of Africa. So this is the first time we, uh, someone is uh, conducting a survey of that nature in Africa. Uh, we decided to choose uh, those eight countries because they are quite representative of the different uh, faces of Africa, uh, some countries from North Africa, from South, East and, and West Africa, uh, the size of the countries themselves and uh, the fact that some countries are uh, differently impacted by, uh, by the virus uh, and the size of the sample as well, you know, 4,000 people. This is quite representative. We picked up uh, uh, population, you know, from uh, urban areas, but also uh, from, uh, you know, the, the outside the, the, the cities. Uh, and uh, this is quite uh, a representative sample as well in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the, the proportion of gender, age, uh, and the categories, uh, the professional categories of the population as well. Looking at the findings, though, I'm trying to understand, do we see like a pattern when it comes to the regions, like talking about East Africa, West Africa, or Southern Africa? The, the results are, are quite consistent, you know, uh, they're quite consistent. There are some differences uh, depending on countries on some specific matters. For example, the, the level of, uh, of uh, uh, fear, of uh, anxiety uh, in the populations, are uh, different from North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. You know, the level of uh, uh, anxiety is higher in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, the level of confidence of the population is also different. Uh, we see a high level of confidence uh, in countries such as uh, Ivory Coast or, or Morocco. Uh, but we see uh, also some, uh, some, some uh, less confidence in uh, countries like South Africa and uh, Nigeria. Uh, as regards the acceptance or the approval of the population towards uh, containment measures, which is pretty high uh, because more than 80% of the respondents are really approving the, the, the measures, there are also some disparities depending on the countries with high level of acceptance in, uh, in uh, North Africa uh, countries and less acceptance in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. All right, but I'm curious to know, for you specifically, what, were, what would you say were the top three reveals um, from this survey? You know, things that may, may not, you didn't expect to come out, but then, you know, it just popped up. Yeah, I was expecting, uh, of course, a uh, 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 high level of uh, worriness about, uh, about the crisis. But uh, what was really uh, striking, you know, through the service, you know, the specific... Uh, uh, the specific anxiety relating to poverty, uh, specific anxiety relating to the to the food uh, shortage. Of course, it's very specific to Africa compared to other regions of the world. Uh, but also, I was really surprised by the, the high level of uh, of confidence of the population towards uh, government, uh, which is uh, uh, something that is uh, really, uh, you know, revealing uh, the fact that uh, overall the the African continents uh, have been, you know, a, a really well we, we, well anticipated and, and uh, deployed uh, very early, uh, you know, at the beginning of the crisis, some some very strong measures, uh, very strong uh, measures to protect the population avoiding uh, an, a very a very sharp increase in the number of cases. Of course, the number of cases are, 
are continuing to increase in Africa. Uh, uh, the virus is still there, uh, but uh, but the early measures and the the magnitude of the of the, the the social and economic plans that have been deployed by uh, the both the public and the private sector uh, in, in in Africa uh, is revealing the way that the, that Africa you know facing it is this uh, crisis with uh, a very a very strong leadership. Uh, uh, for all the task forces we see in the continent. And this is really uh, a positive sign uh, uh, towards, uh, you know, some of the transformations, the key transformations the, the continent has to, to make uh, uh, during that crisis, but uh, even uh, after, the, after the crisis. There are still a lot of challenges in Africa. Uh, we, um, we anticipate that some of the plans, and we hope that some of the plans will produce some uh, some results but the the key priorities uh, are still uh, there there are some challenges uh, the continent has to really strengthen his uh, health uh, health system uh, the 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 continent has to pursue the the digital transformation and needs to uh, uh, take care of that, you know, uh, and, and arrive to a more resilient and sustainable organization, uh, needs to develop some competitive and self-sufficient agricultural, industrial, and service sectors. Of course, uh, you know, on, on a both social and financial standpoints, uh, include uh, the informal sector and uh, has to make, you know, Pan-African integration effective and, and operational, you know, those are the key challenges that the, the continent is facing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, even you know after that crisis. And that was Bryce Chassels, is the managing partner for Francophone Africa at Deloitte Africa. Stick around; Beyond Market continues after the break, and we'll get an independent opinion on this survey. <music> 